that we have a hybrid event. So as you'll see from the cameras, um, a large part of the audience will be joining us um, online, not present in the room. Um, so we're just making sure that everything's uh, set up and streaming so that they can enjoy the same experience that, uh, that we all do in the room. So just bear with us. Are we good to go? Fantastic. Okay, so Scott McDonald, Chief Executive of the British Council. Dr. Mayhew, Director, National Foreign Languages Project for the Min Ministry of Education and Training. Dr. Queen, Director of the Department of Research, Science and Innovation at ULIS at the Vietnam National University and Dr. Tuk An, uh, Head of the English Department at the Olympia Schools. Esteemed guests in the room and esteemed guests joining us online, I'd like to say a very warm welcome and good afternoon to our event this afternoon in Intu, in this lovely venue here today. Um, I'd like to say something about why we're here. So this today, the meeting today is part of our New Direction series of events and workshops and activities. And these events and this program have gained a lot of kudos over the years in driving to advance thinking in assessment policy, bringing together great minds in the field and, and pushing innovation as far as possible uh, in this field. Um, we like to bring together to discuss these things not only academics but also policy makers and practitioners to explore lots of new ideas and challenge established thinking. The culmination of this year's events will be uh, this year in October in Hanoi um, who will be hosting the New Directions Conference again as part of the British Council season of events to celebrate 30 years of cultural relations work in Vietnam, which is a fantastic achievement and I think something amazing to celebrate. Um, today's panel discussion is part of this series uh, that will be leading up to this. Uh, and the, the special thing about this conference, I think, to really highlight to you all is this is the first time that New Directions is returning to the same city. We've never done that before. It shows the great esteem and importance that we give to our work here in Vietnam, uh, the bond that we have. And I think very interestingly, it will give us an opportunity to explore some of the things that we talked about first time. And we can see where we are now and where we're going. And I think that's very much also in line with, with one of the other topics of this, this week's meetings, uh, which is about the future of English as well. So let's look to the past, to the present, and to the future. Now on to today's topic, which is, which is currently a very hot topic, which is uh, language assessment and, and Vietnam and why we want to have this panel discussion. Uh, this is because Vietnam has embraced foreign language tests as a core part of its educational system following a long collaboration between the British Council, the National English Language Programme, um, and between UK and Vietnamese language experts, who've been working together on the design, the evaluation, and the implementation of effective uh, language education policies in Vietnam. And Vietnam, through this, has embraced foreign language tests as a core part of what they do. Um, the accreditation of Aptis and IELTS as high quality examinations is a part of this broad and deep engagement of policy level, um, research level and exams operational level. So it's very, very deep and very broad. And here to discuss this program and its importance is a distinguished panel of experts. So we have uh, Mr. Scott McDonald, who's our chief executive, uh, joining us here on a brief uh, first visit to Vietnam, but hopefully not the last. We have Dr. Mai Hu, who's the director of the National Foreign Languages Project. Dr. Queen, uh, director of the Department of Research, Science and Innovation at ULIS. And Dr. Tuk An, head of the English department at Olympia Schools. Each of the speakers will be giving their opening statements. And then following this, we have a series of questions which we'll place to the panel and ask them to debate and discuss. And at the end of that, uh, in the remaining time, we'll pass over to the audience online and in the room uh, for further questions about this very hot and exciting topic. So let me start by inviting uh, Scott to give his opening remarks.
Thank, thank you, Steve, um, and well, welcome everyone. St Steve has done such a brilliant job in his in introduction. He has covered every single point in my opening notes. <laughs> so I'm going to do something different and tell you a little bit about the British Council um, and why assessment is so important to us. So, so our job is to build connections, understanding, and trust between the people of the UK and, and in this case, the people of, of Vietnam. And we have a very long time period to do this. We're supposed to think over decades, not over short periods. Um, and we do that through, we have three things we do it through. Um, arts and culture, so we do lots of exchange in, in whether it's theater or dance or fashion. Education, um, where we do lots of work in higher education with schools and, and partnerships and science research and, and a variety of things, and the English language. The English language is a big part of our focus in Vietnam, where we, we, we do work teaching, uh, we do work focused on, on, on how, how students learn better, and we do a lot of work on, with um, the government on what the best way to assess English is and, and make sure that we're actually making progress as a system. And we're very proud to work in partnership with, it, with our colleagues here from, from the ministry. We, we think Vietnam is making very good progress and, and making sure the assessment has you know, high quality and high integrity is a crucial part of all of that. And, and I'm really looking forward to what my colleagues have to say today about the subject. Thank you very much, Scott. So I'll first pass over to uh, Mai Hu then. Yeah, thank you. And uh, before I start my presentation about assessment in Vietnam, I would like to say thanks to the British Council for your support to the activities of the NFLP for so far since the beginning of the project up to now more than 10 years. This is a long process and your collaborative collaboration uh, helped us a lot. And uh, in my presentation today, I will show you how the British Council helped the NFLP activities in assessment and testing in language um, education in Vietnam. Okay, um, uh, about the National Foreign Languages Project, that you may know that uh, it is a uh, project of the government Right, in implementing the government's initiative of how to improve the quality of foreign languages education in Vietnam. And the government assigned the Ministry of Education and Training to implement the project. And so the project is part of the Ministry of Education and Training. However, there are um, projects uh, at the different ministry of the government and the provinces and the schools, universities as well, to implement the project. And you know that the project was implement, has been implemented following the two decisions of the government. Decision number 1400 and decision one, one, uh, 2080. Yeah, two decisions already. And we are going to implement until uh, 2025. And a lot of activities have been implemented so far uh, about uh, curricular development teachers edu education and training, language teachers education and training, um, assessment and testing, and other activities as well. And also activities, the activities uh, support the processes of decision uh, policy making of the ministry. Okay. And uh, in order to implement all those activities, the very important activities that the NFLP had supported the ministry to develop it, the uh, uh, frameworks for uh, references for foreign languages competences for Vietnam issued in 2014 with six levels corresponding to the six levels of the CEFR. Uh, so from level one to six corresponding to A1 to C2. And that is a very important document uh, with which we have other policies made regarding the standards of language qualification proficiency in foreign languages proficiency in Vietnam uh, for the, for the uh, official staff of the government, the requirement for the official staff of the government, the English teachers and, uh, and expected outcomes of the learners of different levels of education and also with which we have the curricula developed the, so we have the national uh, curriculum, of, uh, English curriculum for K-12 issued in 2018 and on many universities with their autonomy they have developed their own 
uh, foreign languages education curricula uh, based on based on the uh, the framework of Vietnam. Okay, and uh, relating uh, assessment uh, w with the activities of the NFLP, we have developed and consulted the Mimo Ministry uh, to uh, carry out a number of activities. Uh, let me say with you some of them. Uh, firstly, in uh, uh, K to 12 education, the general education, as you can see that uh, the ministry issued two circulars for assessment and testing for all subjects from uh, grade one to grade 12, and uh, in which the uh, they they supported formative assessments, and also we have the component of uh, summative assessment as well, right? And and uh, with formative assessment and uh, uh, we focus on the competences based assessment for the so that the teachers can use the assessment tools uh, formative assessment tools to help develop the competences the for communicative English language competences of the learners and uh, we formed the NFLP point of view we uh, thought that the teachers in Vietnam need guidelines towards how to use formative assessment techniques into, in the teaching of English as a school. So we developed the uh, guidelines of how to apply formative assessment techniques as a, uh, as a schools. And uh, uh, f we have guidelines for, from grade one, uh, grade three to get grade 12. So uh, we have three sets of guidelines for three levels of education, primary, secondary, and upper secondary levels. And uh, six, uh, I'm sorry, 10 manuals for each grade, grade from grade three to grade 12. Yes, and with those guidelines and manuals, the teachers have the very specific examples of how to apply formative assessment techniques into their teaching and how to incorporate them into their own lesson planning for each lesson. And then they can use the techniques while they are de delivering the lessons. Okay. And with the ways to develop, I, I would like to stress the competences of the learners. And, of, and, and you can see that formative assessments, summat, sorry, summative assessments still important in the, uh, doc, in the two documents. And, uh, some of this assessment here, I would like to refer to the midterm test and the end of term test and the proficiency test as well. And so these, as the, the ministry also uh, it helped the teachers with developing the, uh, the test formats and the test specifications. And the ministry is that a lot of uh, training and introduction to the teachers in Vietnam. To, uh, in how to apply those formats and test facts uh, to develop the test forms. Okay. And uh, also, we, uh, besides the test that, uh, uh, that the teachers can develop by themselves, yeah, as uh, Scott and uh, Steve mentioned, we have international tests. We have international tests that are accepted already in Vietnam, the IELTS test, the Cambridge test, that the, the students who have no tests uh, can have the score uh, transferred to the uh, exit test of the, K to, of the grade 12 of the high school that you can see. And also those tests are accepted by many universities for the uh, entrance requirement of the students. As you can see very, very popular right now at the universities and the students in Vietnam are taking uh, the test. Uh, to uh, firstly to see whether how good they are and what's the prof their proficiencies of English right, language and also for the purposes of the uh, exit test of K to town to and for the entrance requirement to the universities and also to universities in other countries as well and uh, as for the teachers I believe that the scores of those tests those they are summative test assessment, summative assessment, they are 
um, proficiency testing, but they help the teachers in knowing the progresses of the, of the uh, lang language, English language development of the proficiency development of the learners, and then they can have the strategies to work, uh, how to change their own ways of teaching with particular students so that they can help them better. Okay. So I don't I think that just not just summative, but also they can help some way to form the ways of learning and teaching of the teachers. Okay. And for the uh, university levels we also uh, promote competencies based assessment and formative assessment together with the very traditional summative assessment. And uh, at NFLP, we developed a guidelines to be assessment guidelines to be used at uh, the universities. So in the guidelines, we have the assessment process, with procedures, uh, from the ideas of developing an assessment tools into evaluating how the assessment has been applied and then uh, those pro procedures we uh, we use the one introduced by NT in assessment in developing uh, assessment tool by uh, NT in 2011 and uh, in there in, in in the process we mentioned not only how the process is developing test format test facts test for specifications but also as uh, the sample tests, and also we look at uh, not all, uh, we look at the uh, how the ways how to give feedback, effective feedback to learners with the assessment results, with the assessment scores, so the how the learners will know get the benefit of the assessment scores and the assessment and the teachers know how to with the scores, right? And the results, the results of assessment, the teachers know right away how to help the, te the students in uh, coming in the coming time to change to to progress better. Okay, so we have all those documents available at the NFLP, and we would like you if you you want to know more about those products, please contact us. Okay, and yep. And uh, in the process, in that uh, on those products, I would like to say thank you to the British Council for your support so far. You helped us in developing, organizing the a series of uh, conference uh, and workshops, uh, namely the uh, VLAS, the Vietnam Language Assessment Symposium in 2017, 2019, and, two, and this year as well, the three times already. Uh, yeah, and three different cities, so, yes, and, and also the direction series, two times, twice already, uh, uh, not, not yet twice, but decided twice, okay, one in 2016, and this year, in uh, November this year, uh, October, sorry, October this year, that is a very uh, interesting uh, confer international conference in the area, and one of the, I believe that the, one of the most attractive international conference in assessment in language education in in the area and in the world as well okay and uh, and um, the British Council's helped us with the strategic aspects and you supported in the, 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 uh, for with us in developing the this the circular number 23 in which which we have different test centers throughout the country yeah, because the reason is there are two sources, two ways of thinking. One is only one test center for the whole country. Like we have ETS or uh, for English, uh, for, uh, for in the USA, one cent big center like that, or many different centers. And then finally, with uh, your experts, consultants, and then we we have uh, it. Uh, we have the system like it is right now, with many test centers in Vietnam right now, more than twenty test centers with the uh, local developed test. Yeah, thank you. And uh, any comments? Uh, and uh, I'm ready um, to uh, share with you further. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very yeah. much, Dr. Mayhu. Yeah. Uh, over to you, Dr. Queen, for your oh. uh, opening statement. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to British Council for inviting me to this uh, very important event first. 
and um, you know, as a, a researcher and also a, a lecturer at uh, one university, at the University of Languages and International Studies, Vietnam National University, I'd like to um, share the feeling, I believe, with all the participants who are present here at this hall, and also many uh, who are attending online as well, to um, highly um, appreciate and also express our thanks to the uh, uh, partnership and the collaborations that British Health Council have been um, uh, uh, maintaining with the people here in Vietnam. In uh, Just now, Dr. Mai Hiu have just told you an excellent overview of the reform of English education and uh, assessment in Vietnam. And I believe British Council have actually contributed greatly to this, um, to the achievements of this. Um, so, uh, and to date, um, just now you also talk, uh, listen to uh, Dr. Mai Hiu about the achievement of the um, assessment reform in terms of the standardized test, which we have already got the very first ever uh, um, Vietnamese standardized test of English proficiency, which is the VSTEP in short, as well as a lot of uh, achievements in terms of both summative and formative assessment, classroom assessment as well. And um, so you have helped us a lot in, the, uh, in order to achieve all these uh, success in the English policy, language policy um, uh, uh, formation, as well as in the practices of English education and assessment. So thank you for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Kui. Dr. Tukan. Hi. Um, so, um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, so far, we've listened to uh, the panelists here sharing the broader context of um, English learning and English assessment in Vietnam at the national level and um, in the higher education sector. So I'm going to share a bit of my experience as a teacher and a subject head from the private school sector and how the UK language education expertise has supported um, in the design and, and implementation of the English program at our school. Um, so, um, as with any other uh, English program in Vietnam, the English program at our school has undergone uh, a lot of transformation. And um, we gradually added a lot of different elements to it to better prepare the students for um, international context. Um, so which means that we are adding uh, different standards and frameworks, um, such as the P21 framework for 21st century learning skills. We uh, added the um, OECD's framework for global competence, etc. So uh, you can see a wide range of standards that we are using for different purposes. But one thing has remained constant, and that is um, the fact that our language competencies component um, has been designed based on the CFR uh, standards and on the Cambridge and IELTS benchmarks. Um, besides the fact that Cambridge and IELTS are world recognized tests um, that are accepted in hundreds of countries in the world, um, it is the rich ecosystem that surround these tests, that provide parents and schools and students with a lot of resources um, to build um, the comprehensive learning system and align the three different uh, pillars of it, i.e. the curriculum, the delivery, and the assessment. So uh, because our topic today is on assessment, I'm not going to talk about the first two, and I'm going to just focus on the assessment part. Um, at our school, we use a combination of summative and informative assessment. Um, so in between the different projects and essays and debates and presentations that the students give, they are um, also given parts of like Cambridge and IELTS test as checkpoints to see where they are in the process of acquiring the language and uh, what else needs to be addressed to, to move further. Um, so in this sense, um, IELTS and Cambridge tests are being used as assessments for learning and as revelation, uh, not as a destination. Uh, but we also use Cambridge and IELTS as 
assessments of learning um, in the sense that at the end of every academic year, our students take either the Cambridge um, status movers flyers, uh, key and preliminary uh, English test, or uh, at the end of grade 11 and 12, almost 100% of our students take the IELTS to prepare for their college application. So um, I would say that uh, UK education, uh, language education and assessment has been very useful and a very important part uh, in our school curriculum design and, and implementation and assessment quality control. Um, and I, I cannot say for all schools um, in Hanoi or Vietnam, but uh, I'm guessing that other Vietnamese bilingual schools are in the same boat. Um, and we are greatly appreciating the, the support that uh, British councils and other UK uh, education institutions have been giving us uh, with resources, materials, videos, tutorials, and you know, New Directions conferences like this so that we can uh, continue, uh, continuously build a stronger English program for everyone. Great, thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much to all of our speakers there for those really fascinating opening statements. Uh, and it was really good to hear throughout you know, mention of the Common European Framework of Reference, of IELTS, and so on, uh, and this pegging to international standards with international exams. But I'm quite interested to hear a little bit more about how we got to this point. I mean, in my, in my view, it was a bold move, I think, for Vietnam to embed UK assessments so deeply into the education system. So many thousands of young people in Vietnam are taking a UK uh, English exam uh, to assess their progress. So my first question then is, how and why was this decision taken? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct the first question to you, Dr. Mayhew. Yeah, uh, the, uh, firstly, in order to help the uh, um, expertise to embed, to learn the, ex from the expertise from the UK into the education system in Vietnam, we have the support from the organizations in Vietnam, like British Council, the embassies, and the experts, and our experts uh, keep pace with and uh, keep track of uh, all the up all the common best practice in assessment and testing in in particular and in language education in general. And I would like to say thanks to the experts, international experts, and the local experts for your support to the NFLP activities so far. Without you, we cannot move forward uh, to this point. Okay, and uh, relating the decision and policy making process, uh, in order to accept or can say to recognize a test, uh, the score of uh, an international test. Right now, the ministry issued this is circular number eleven in two thousand and twenty-one, which uh, provides third with the. Uh, uh, um, uh, framework of how to evaluate, how to assess the uh, international, uh, not, 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 not evaluate, but how to select the one that meet the requirements of the ministry so that we can recognize and accept the test scores in Vietnam. Okay. Great, thank you. Would anybody yeah. else like to comment on that? Mm -hmm. You know? This bold move to accept the tests into Vietnam, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for the British Council, one of the mission, as far as I know, is to assist to um, um, develop the English uh, uh, capacity of in other countries, including Vietnam. And I, I believe that British Council have done a good job here in Vietnam in uh, helping the different institutions, just like as you, uh, from myself, as. Uh, high, higher education um, 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 uh, lecturer and researcher, as well as in many um, uh, secondary and um, schools as well, in different schools in Vietnam. So yes, you have been um, committed to supporting uh, in, um, us to increase the education of English in Vietnam. So through the collaboration for the past few decades, um, so yes, UK um, stand, uh, uh, exams 
which also show the uh, standards of English also have been very common, very popular here in Vietnam. And you've been listening to, uh, to Ang about the use of um, different UK exams, including IELTS. And now, nowadays, APTIS II. Um, so these are yeah, being used in different um, um, institutions, in different contexts in Vietnam, and which is a good sign of uh, both the collaboration as well as of the effort from the government of Vietnam and the education system in uh, particular in increasing the English uh, capacity for the people here in Vietnam. Okay, then. so it, I mean, thank you very much. You know, on behalf of the British Council, you know, the, you're saying very kind, and nice things about our work here. And um, Scott, I mean, what do you think, Scott? What is it about the British Council that makes the British Council a good partner? So, f first of all, thank 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 you to all three of you for the the kind comments about the British Council. I I think there's two reasons why the British Council is a good partner. Well, one is around expertise and quality and one is around the reason why we exist and, and both are really important and I think the expertise and quality argument is a, is a more normal one. It just we've been around a long time doing a, a lot of assessment around the world and I think we've faced just about every challenge and assessment that there is in, in hundreds of countries. Yeah. And we managed to bring together all that experience. We're big enough that we can invest a lot in research and insight and really, really understand what makes a, an assessment high quality. So that hopefully that's part of what we offer. But this, I, the second and the more important point in my mind is why do we do assessment work in Vietnam? And the reason we do assessment work here is part of our mission to build connections, understanding, and trust. So we think when we do assessment, we're providing opportunity for people to for employment, for mobility, um, or for other things they're going on to try and do. And remember, the British Council is not, we're not a for-profit company. So while we have to charge for assessment like, like everyone else does, we don't have shareholders that take that money. We don't pay our people internally more because we do a lot of exams. All that money just goes back to supporting the operations of the British Council, which then you hopefully feel through the strategic work we can do with the government and the advisory work and the conferences we can put on so I think those are the two reasons we're a good partner. And I, I know there are, other, there are many other possible partners, and we need to continuously work at those two things and make sure we remain you know, strong on both. That's great. Would anybody else like to pick that uh, comment? I, I think I totally agree with that, mm -hmm. because um, the fact that, we're used, that when we decided to use um, Cambridge or IELTS or UK uh, benchmarks for our programs, because um, it's not, the tests are not just tests. Um, there are a lot of things that go along with it um, that helps us to build um, a strong program. And it's the support from, like I mentioned earlier, the free materials, the tutorials on YouTube, the conferences, the workshops. We constantly receive uh, emails from <coughs> the British Council about free uh, workshops for teachers to uh, professionally be developed in different aspects of their teachings. So um, that was the main reason why, why we decided to, to go uh, with British Council on this, uh, because we know that you are putting a lot of effort into um, supporting the local um, universities and, and schools um, in our educational um, mission. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, okay, then. So, uh, we had an event yesterday all about the future of English, and Dr. Queen kindly hosted us there at ULIS, and um, other languages were mentioned, not just English, you know, the mention of, of, of different languages that are you know, come into, into, into Vietnam's thinking when it comes to, uh, to English, to, sorry, to assessment and education. But it seems that Vietnam has invested a lot of time and effort, particularly into English language. So, I mean, what, why is English so important for Vietnam? I'll ask you that one first, Dr. Green. Oh, yes. Um, so, you know, for nowadays, in, so in the context of the rigorous, uh, globalized and regionalized uh, world, 
English capacity has become a must for the labor force in order to maintain the competitiveness. And nowadays, you see that um, employment has become more and more competitive across borders and internationally. Especially recently, within ASEAN, for example, the ASEAN economic um, uh, uh, community has been enforced since 2015, to my knowledge. So it means that even within these small regions, like of the ASEAN regions, um, the labor, the all the uh, workers and and professionals can look for jobs in other nations as well. So employment has become such competitive. So English capacities becomes uh, essential to in order to maintain, you know, uh, the competitiveness and also to open up to other opportunities. And however, um, English capacity has been one of the biggest limitations or the constraints as stated by one government uh, officials uh, in promoting the National Foreign Languages Projects in 2013. So you could see that you, uh, English has, been, has become so important and that's why you could see nowadays, uh, yesterday we also mentioned this fact, although like at my own universities we offer 10 different languages, but the statistics um, recently stated that even nearly 99% of the learners in Vietnam are learning English, right? Only 1% is st are studying other foreign languages. So you could see why, because English has become the key to, for the Vietnamese people to get into the world nowadays. Yes, Dr. Mayhew. Yeah, and among all the languages in the world right now, you can see that the biggest volume of knowledge is now stored in English. Do you agree with me with that? So that is the reason why English is so popular and people learn English to learn the word knowledge. Yeah, that is, yeah. So, yeah. Would anybody else like to pick that one up? I mean, one of, one of the panelists on the English discussion yesterday had a good analogy and he said, and, you, know, you used to have a house and you, you needed always electricity and plumbing. And that was the infrastructure you needed for a house. And he, and he said, you know, now you need electricity, plumbing, and Wi-Fi. And if you don't, don't have those, the house isn't really working. And that's how he thinks of English now. You know, it's not, it's not the answer to everything. It will change, but it really helps to have it, have, have it plugged in. Great, thank you. So we've, we've had a lot of talk and discussion so far about uh, assessment at policy level, but I'd like to drill down a little bit more now into the individuals. So as we know, many, many young Vietnamese students will now need to take a high stakes, standardized English language test. So from a national standpoint, I think we all agree that this will drive an improvement in levels of English nationally uh, when you look at it from policy level but but what impact uh, do you think this will have on the students as individuals so as a school leader I'm going to ask you that question first Dr. Dogan. Thank you. Um, so by a show of hand can I ask how many of you here like standardized tests? <laughs> okay. um, I guess not as many as I had hoped. Um, so I think normally when people think standardized tests these days, um, they think of some of the obvious negative impacts um, on, on the students. For example, uh, stress and anxiety, uh, maybe low self-esteem if uh, you receive low results, poor results. Uh, maybe uh, the loss of opportunities for many capable students uh, if something happens to them on the test date that, that prevents them from performing to uh, their best ability. Or um, maybe inequality uh, between privileged and underprivileged uh, students, uh, which then can grow into frustration and disappointment in the system. Or uh, people also talk about the, po uh, the possibility of adding different elements to the English program uh, that would be limited or discouraged because they are not part of the assessment. For example, um, 
interdisciplinary projects, um, community service project, or literature uh, literature projects, etc. So, um, I mean, like the discussions of the pros and cons of uh, standardized tests uh, have been going on in the academic world for for a while. But there are other uh, positive. Uh, impacts of standardized tests, right? That's why some of us raised our hands. Uh, it, it includes having the students having clearer goals for their studies um, because, you know, like knowing the, the outcomes of the standards by reading about them is different from demonstrating those skills and knowledge uh, in a test. And um, it might sound counterintuitive, but it, the, the fact that you have to do a standardized test actually creates motivation for some people because having clearer goals and constant feedback about your performance uh, gives you the motivation to, to move forward. Uh, and next, uh, when the test is done properly and designed uh, properly, then the students will know their strengths and weaknesses, um, especially if the test feedback is done um, sufficiently well. Um, so students can have a plan to improve uh, every time they take a test. And lastly, you know, standardized tests are pretty stressful, right? Um, so being, being able to uh, cope with practicing for and taking a high stakes standardized test um, is actually you practicing uh, different character traits that are very essential in college and in uh, work later, like uh, resilience, uh, perseverance, problem solving, hard work, self-motivation, mm -hmm. and sometimes dealing with failure with the view to move forward. Right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, when I talk about the pros and cons here, I'm being very uh, tentative because when the test is designed properly, uh, and when the English program that comes with it takes into consideration the many different possible consequences, then the problems might not be problems. But when a test is poorly designed, poorly administered, then you probably won't see any of the benefits that I've just mentioned. So it is the matter of um, knowing what you want to assess, uh, how to design a good test to measure what you want to measure, mm -hmm. and how to properly create a system that supports uh, the implementation uh, of the program and the assessment. Fantastic, that's great, that's a really positive view there. <laughs> uh, would anybody else like to comment on that one? The impact well, on the individual? I'd like to add to that. Um, yeah, since our topic today is actually assessing English in Vietnam, an international approach. So I think it's quite it's it's very good that we actually are talking about the use of the pop, um, uh, standardized test nowadays. And yes, a lot of people are using um, the high stakes standardized test of English here in Vietnam. And I'd like to continue with my arguments of you know uh, employability. So it's you need to we need to show our cap English capacity up to the international standards in order to show that we are capable of doing this and that in even not only in Vietnam but in other countries as well. So that is why um, standardized tests of English at the moment are so popular so that we Vietnamese can show our uh, the evidence of our capacity. And um, also I'd like to add to that um, as you, you know, Vietnam has adopted the CEFR, which we actually put that into the Vietnam, Vietnam Sixth Level uh, Framework of Language Proficiency, right? So basically, we follow the rule, the international standards, and that's for that as well, in terms of in practice, we are also using those standardized tests in order to show the evidence up to those framework. So I, I, I believe that is one of the reasons. Yeah. yeah, I quite agree with you too about the pros and cons of uh, standardized tests and high stake standardized tests. And I believe that the organizations like um, Cambridge and British Council, you are all following the uh, best uh, pro uh, procedures to develop good tests 
um, to pursue the reliability, validity, practicality, although quality is a very important qualities of mm -hmm. testing. And so the test, your tests are popular in the world. And I, I can see that there is a one trend. Such people just learn to take the test only. And sometimes they may, uh, they, they may not properly develop their own skills. What do you think? Is that the disadvantage of learning to work test, standardized test or not? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think? Well, I think, well, I mean, yeah. if a standardized test yeah. tests the right skills, yeah. then it will encourage the learner yes. to, to learn the right skills. So, yes. for example, in the in the case of IELTS and Aptis, yes. it's communicative based yes. on real life communication. That's great. So the smart candidate thinks, oh, I need to cram for this test, therefore I have to learn about real life communication. Yes. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Rather than memorizing text or answers or formulate things, mm. you know, really, you know, they they almost uh, they're almost tricked. It's not fair to say tricked, yes. you know through backwash into, into learning skills that are going to be really useful for them later in life. Yeah, I you do know. agree with you. And, and we ourselves, we see the, one, of exa one example of how you are making sort of the validity and reliability of your test, specifically the validity of the test. And you compare your Optis test and the V-STEP test of Vietnam. And we, two members of the oh, same yes. project. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, then, uh, let's move on to... The, oh, 10 minutes left. So uh, let's move on to uh, the next question, then. So uh, continuing the theme from yesterday, as uh, some of us were uh, involved in the conference yesterday talking about the future of English, which is based on a very important uh, publication that's come out building on past work to say what the future of English may be, and it has a number of predictions. So, Scott, I'd like to pick that theme up with you uh, in this context. So, what would you say was the role of the British Council in the future of English assessment in Vietnam? So, it's related to how I answered the, the previous question you asked. I mean, our role here is to build trust. English is one of the tools we have to do that, and, and so we're focused in two ways. One is working essentially with the government and institutions on Vietnam's human resources you know, goals around the English language. And to do that, we have to touch all parts, I think, and, mm. and sort of system support. But we've got to look at all of teaching, learning, and assessment. And then the second part is working with individuals and, a and actually teaching or doing assessment and hopefully building trust through, through, through that regard. So, I think we, we have to be constantly stepping back and saying the goal is to help Vietnam reach, it, reach its English goals. And to the extent we can be helpful in assessment in that goal, that, that's a role we can play and we can continue to provide expertise. But the, the government here will, will evolve its view too and they'll evolve their knowledge, they'll evolve the regulation they want, they'll evolve the systems and so our, our um, I think job will be to you know try and evolve with that and continue to support in the different ways that the new systems and regulations will will require. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and maybe I can ask you now, Dr. Mayhew, what would you like the British Council's role to be in the future of assessment in Vietnam? Yes. So yeah, uh, uh, before assessment, I would like to stress on English teaching as well. Yeah, okay. I would like you to uh, uh, to open more. Uh, teaching scientists in Vietnam so more mm -hmm. students of Vietnam can have the opportunities to learn with your teachers, your, your, your programs. And uh, regarding assessment in Vietnam, we could uh, see in the near future, yeah, still the your tests are popular, going to be popular in Vietnam with the, I believe that uh, more students and teachers going to use your test in their own learning and teaching of English. It's not just for the purposes of uh, employment or, or, or entrance requirement to university or schools, but for their own progress in English learning. Yeah. And, um, and also I see your involved in more uh, into collaboration, deeper and more activities in, collaborat in collaboration with the, not just only the 
individuals, institutes, or uh, uh, organizations in, the, in Vietnam, but also the government bodies as well, not just only the Ministry of Education and Training, I think, Molisa, other ministries as well. I think they need, they need support. And uh, I think your activities, your assessment uh, expertise can help, help us more. Yeah. That's a really interesting yeah. challenge. We'll, we'll <laughs> follow up on that one afterwards. Mm. Dr. Tokan, same question to you. What would you like the role of the British Council, the future role to be in assessment in, assessment, in Vietnam? What course, do you want yes. from us? Yes. Um, so uh, we do struggle with some other sort of tests and assessments for different other elements of the program. For example, um, uh, for placement tests, because when we have to use uh, a full Cambridge or IELTS test for placement, it's just taking too long and it's just not very practical. So we need like a shorter, easier uh, version of, uh, of the test or maybe a new one for placement purposes to correctly put the students in the right level for, for their uh, program. Um, I read about the English score on, on your website, so we're going to explore that. But that is one thing that we hope uh, Speak to Speak to me more, after the meeting. Okay, <laughs> to have more support with. And then there are other things in the program that we find difficult to assess. For example, um, the 21st century skills, uh, the four Cs, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. Mm -hmm. So we usually assess those through uh, doing projects, like having students doing projects and watching them throughout the process. But we wonder if there are some sort of uh, assessment for that that could be meaningful or not. Um, that is maybe a strange question. Yeah. No, no, it's a great question. Yeah. I'm just asking somebody to write it down so that we'll follow up with you afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe those two. Fantastic. Yeah. That's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Queen, over to you. What do you want from the British Council in the future of assessment in Vietnam? It's a very good question, actually, um, because I'm asking for a lot of <laughs> So at the national level, you've been listening to the support to, you know, the in terms of decision-making consultancy. And um, also, we would like to um, ask for co your continued commitment in providing high-quality tests, including ILSTS and APTIS test, which is um, the, um, you know, which um, both for the... Uh, uh, academic as well as general English test mm -hmm. and at the institutional level um, uh, at ULIS for example uh, we've got the um, collaboration with the assessment research um, group and we would like to call for further collaborations in, in order to increase the capacity of Vietnamese researcher in terms of assessment research and also at individual levels um, uh, recently, uh, I've, um, I'm also honored to be involved in a, a research, which is um, the language assessment in Vietnam. We focus on you know, the um, uh, assessment literacy of Vietnamese teachers, and we found out that we do need more support um, in, in order to increase the assessment literacy of and also the capacities of the teachers. And we would like to also, I would hope that British Council would continue to support the Vietnamese teachers on that. So at different levels, individuals, institutional, as well as national level. That's a very long shopping list, but uh, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll do our I very told best. You, I asked, Absolutely. I'm for a lot. No, no, we're happy. We'll have a challenge. That's fantastic. Listen, we're only halfway through our questions, but unfortunately, our, our time has run out. So uh, at this point, um, I'd like to say, you know, thank you very much indeed to our panel. I'd like you to give them a round of applause for that fantastic intro. Uh, we're going to say goodbye now to our audience joining us online. But for those in the room, um, Scott and myself would just like to present our esteemed guests with a small token of our appreciation. And after that, would you be kind enough to join us all for a group photograph? Yes? Perfect. Thank you.